worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the honor. He is worthy of the glory. I want to invite your attention to Isaiah 41. And I'm going to just share uh, some thoughts with you. Um, I thought were noteworthy, at least to bring us to a place and a point where we understand the value of who we are in Christ Jesus. God cares an awful lot about you as his people. And he has carried us and he's bearing us on eagle's wings. And I want to talk about that today, soaring on eagle's wings. It is the Lord's doing and truly it is marvelous in our sight that he has redeemed us from the hands of the enemy. We were all on our way to a place called hell. We were all on our way, didn't understand anything about redemption, didn't know anything about restoration, didn't know anything about reconciliation. Honestly, didn't know anything about the true love of God. We were just living life aimlessly and going through life aimlessly. And God has now showed us by his love that has been given to us that we belong to him. And the indwelling of the Holy Ghost testifies that you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to you. Even those of you who are, are not in a uh, state that you should be in, God still has ransomed you. But he's going to do what is necessary to bring you back into close proximity in relationship with him. And so I want to talk to your hearts about soaring on eagle's wings. In, in the word of God, you find uh, there are many, many different metaphors. But I've, I've found that God speaks a lot concerning an eagle and his people. He equates a lot of things that we have to deal with. And he equates it with being with uh, an, an eagle in, in, in th there's so many things that he does and and I, I want to deal with this today in Isaiah 40 and verse number <clears throat> excuse me 28 he says has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth thinks not have you not known have you not heard that the creator of the ends of the universe, that he does not faint, neither is he weary. He doesn't get tired. Don't you know that he is, I'm using this very loosely, he is in an eternal upstage. He, he's, he's, he doesn't slumber nor sleep. He is from everlasting to everlasting whom you serve. Lord, have mercy. He says there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Now, listen, I don't know how long you've been walking with God, but I can say there are times in your walk, or there will be times in your walk, that you're going to possibly faint. You're, you're going to feel like you have no strength. And the thing is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And what he specializes in is giving strength to those who have no might. He, he specializes in, and I've said this repeatedly, that Jesus is a social worker. He comes and he, he, he does his best to help the underdog, so to speak. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Verse number 30, even the youths shall faint and be weary. Lord God, and the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Ah, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Uh, he said he gives power to the faint. Faint in mind, faint in spirit, faint in attitude, faint in purpose. He said he gives power to them and to them that have no might, he increases the strength that they have. He, he, he takes the little bit, he, Lord, 
I hear you, Lord. He takes what you got left. He takes what you may uh, conjure up as, ah, this is just a little bit. Uh, uh, there's no you. No, 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 no. He takes that little bit of strength and he increases just that. He increases it. You ought to give God a hand praise for increasing strength. Sometimes circumstances put you in a position where you feel like you can't take it no more. You're tired. Uh, saints of God, you, you, you had children that have gone away with and that are on drugs and that are doing this and that. And you tried everything you can. And it seems like you, 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 you're, you're fainting. You're getting tired. You're getting weary. But he says he, 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 he gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Thank God for the strength giver. He gives a strength, church, and you ought to thank God for the strength that he gives you. He is great. He is greatly to be praised. He's a God who is strong and he's mighty and he's mighty in battle. But he says, even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But I love the conjunction. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. If you wait, if you be still, you will find out God will come to your rescue. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter how far left you may feel like you're going or far right. Amen. If you just wait on the Lord, he will strengthen your heart. Dorabasita. Mm. But they that wait upon the Lord, he's going to renew. He's going to renew strength. And they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. In other words, God will come by and he'll give you the strength that you need. Doesn't matter how long what the situation is. You got to know that you belong to the king. And because you belong to the king, amen, he will come by. It is his responsibility. It is his duty to strengthen you as his people. Glory to God. Give me Exodus chapter number 19. Let's see what the Bible says about uh, eagles. Hallelujah. Exodus the 19th chapter. And I want verse number four. Ah, glory to God. Mm. Exodus 19 and verse number four. I believe that's what I want. That's not what I want, but uh, all right. I'm not going to worry with that. Hallelujah to God. He knows exactly where we are, but he gives us what we have need of. He, he gives us strength because he reckons us, our mindset, he reckons us, he equates us with all of those things that eagles possess. Ah, Deuteronomy, let's do that. Deuteronomy chapter number 32, if you will. Deuteronomy 32. Ah, God, thank you. Deuteronomy 32. And let's start at verse number 9. 32, verse number 9. I love this church because it, 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 this is a personal thing. Now listen, you have to make up your mind that you are who this book says you are. You have to do that. Nobody can give it to you. Nobody can insert it. Nobody can inject it. You have to embrace what God says about you for yourself. He goes on in verse number nine and he says this, for the Lord's portion is his people. Stop. The Lord's portion is his people. The Lord's portion is his people. Listen, don't never let nobody make you feel like God don't care nothing about you. You are his beloved. When he has washed you, ransomed you, filled you, drawn you, kept you, you belong to him. Amen. Doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. You belong to Jesus Christ because you have been purchased, amen, by the hand of the Most High God. The Lord's portion is his people. He makes a fuss over his people. He moves mountains for his people. He does what he does just for you because you are his portion. Clap your hands. Tell somebody, I'm the Lord's portion. Amen. I'm special to him. He belongs to me and I belong to him and he broods over me. He watches and hovers over me because I am his portion. Lord have mercy. 
Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. God, listen, he's talking to you. I don't care what you think about yourself, how you feel about yourself, what the circumstances are that are surrounding you right now. You, God, cares about. Jesus has washed you. He has filled you. He has ransomed you. He is keeping you because you are the apple of his eye. Hallelujah. He is watching over you. Verse number 11. As an eagle stirs up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, bearing them on her wings. Lord have mercy. Verse number 12. So the Lord alone did lead him and there was no strange God with them. My God. Listen, he says it very clearly. Amen. That an eagle stirreth up her nest, flutters over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, bearing them on her wings. The eagle does that to her young. Listen. If the eagle does that to her young, don't you think God does the same thing for you? He will take you and he will bear you on eagle's wings. He knows, my God, he knows exactly, amen, how to handle us. And he's taking care of us. Listen, church, Ah, let's talk about it for a moment. Amen. What do eagle's wings symbolize? It symbolizes wisdom. They symbolize bravery and strength. Amen. All of these things are represented in the eagle's wings. There's some time you're going to have to ask God to give you wisdom on how to operate a thing, how to do a thing. Amen. How to make a proper decision. Amen. Even when you're afraid, you you got to ask God to give you his wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. And bear you up on eagle's wings. Hallelujah. It also it symbolizes bravery. Amen. Listen. You'll do things sometimes even though you're scared, but you're brave enough just to do it. Hallelujah. Why? Because you belong to Jesus Christ. It also stem, symbolizes strength. Hallelujah. Because an eagle's wings, child, can if you can bear your young on your my God, what kind of strength do you have? My God. Listen, church. You all can handle any and everything that comes your way. It did not come to you, amen, except it got through God first. God has allowed it to come your direction, and he's given you the ability to be able to handle it. Glory to God. Listen, an eagle's wings, amen, can stretch out 8.5 feet, amen, in length. Holly, that's, that, that, that is equivalent. I'm 5'9". And if you take an eagle and you turn it sideways, amen, that is how tall, how the eagle's wing can stretch out. You're talking about no rasatanda bosha. Mm. When troubles come, storm begins to rise. Hold on and learn to stretch out. Hallelujah to God. He knows exactly, amen, what he's doing. The wingspan of an eagle, amen, is 8.5 feet long. Some of them are 7 feet long. Amen. Glory to God. But he tells you, I will bear you on eagle's wings. I will carry you. I will support you. I got you. That's what Jesus Christ is saying to us. And I'm saying to you all today, I don't care what the circumstances are in your life. Jesus Christ has made it possible for you to be able to handle it, to bear it, because he has got you. Let me give you something my wife read to me yesterday, which I thought was so noteworthy, amen, when it comes down to some characteristics about an eagle, how God always equates us, amen, to eagles. He says, eagles have vision. Uh, eagles have vision. They have vision. Eagles, my God. If you've ever seen an eagle sitting on a high tree or a cliff or the cliff of a mountain, watch closely and still, and the head of the eagle will tilt side to side to observe what is happening below, around it and above it. Ah, glory to God. Eagles have a keen sense of vision. 
Their eyes are specially designed for long range distances. Another eagle soaring from 50 miles away, they can spot it. Our eagles have clear, amen, and precise vision. Lotaba, you as a child of God must have a vision that guides and leads you toward, amen, your spiritual goals. The vision that you have will produce big results. Hallelujah. Amen. You've got to allow yourself through the word of God, amen, to be exactly what he has designed for you to be. Amen. The Bible tells us without a vision, people perish. You've got to have a keen sense. You've got to have a vision. You've got to be able to watch. Hallelujah to God. Amen. In order for you to be a success as you walk with God. Hallelujah. Number two, eagles, amen, are fearless. Thank you, Lord. An eagle will never surrender to the size or the strength of its prey. It will always give a fight to win its prey or regain its territory. Church, when God gave you the Holy Ghost, amen, he gave you the spirit and the tenacity of an eagle. Amen. You don't give up, amen, Ah, your prey. You don't give up freely. You don't throw the towel in. You don't say, what's the use? Hallelujah. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. No matter what the size of a person or what weapon they may be holding, you would attack them without thought and regard for yourself. It would even daunt it wouldn't even dawn on you that you are afraid because your instinct is to protect that which you love and cherish. Listen, if an eagle does this, amen, how much more shall the church, the body of Jesus Christ, amen, how much more shall we operate on the same kind, amen, of instinct? Hallelujah to God. Amen. We ought to be fearless. Glory to God. We're going to face our problems head on because of who's in us. Hallelujah to God. He, he is on the inside. If any man or woman be in Christ, they are a new creation or a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, the Bible said all things become new. Eagles, number three. They are tenacious. Hallelujah. Watch an eagle when a storm comes. When other birds fly away from the storm with fear, an eagle spreads. Amen. It's mighty wings and uses the current to soar to greater height. Glory to God. Some of y'all need to soar your situations. Amen. Look like they're going to take you out, but you ought to let the wind get under your wings. Amen. And let God just soar above it. Amen. Even when people mistreat you, you got to learn how to soar above that. Hallelujah to God. <laughs> Clap your hands. Give God some glory today. Hallelujah. Oh, other birds fly away from the storm. An eagle spreads its mighty wings and uses the current to soar to greater heights. Amen. God will cause you to be better. Amen. Than what you see happening around you. No matter what the storm looks like. How you hold your integrity. You hold your head up high. You keep on soaring and doing that which is lawful and right in the sight of God. The eagle takes advantage of the very storm that lesser birds fear and head for cover. Amen. You ain't no chicken, honey. Eagles and chickens do not occupy the same space. Hallelujah. If you are operating, amen, in a chicken coop, amen, you are in the wrong environment. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. Challenges in life. Amen. Are many. There are storms that we must face as children of God and rise to greater heights. Like an eagle, amen, a leader, amen, a saint, amen, or an individual can only rise to greater heights if he takes up the challenge head on, amen, without running away from it. Listen, hallelujah, amen, you ought to handle it head on. Glory be to God, amen, don't run away from the challenge, hallelujah, stand firm, amen. This, amen, is what God is calling for us to be. We ought to be tenacious, amen, as an eagle is. Number four, an eagle's Eagles are high flyers. They don't fly low. Amen. They are high flyers. Eagles can fly <coughs> up to an altitude of 10,000 feet 
but they are above, they are able to swiftly land on the ground at 10,000 feet. You will never find another bird. If you find another bird, amen, it has to be an eagle, amen, because an eagle can soar to up to 10,000 feet. An eagle doesn't mingle around with pigeons. Hallelujah to God. Yes, sir. I love it. An eagle don't fool with pigeons. Amen. It eats different kinds. Amen. It operates from a different kind of vantage point. It operates from a different kind of attitude. So, Teben, so beyond. Ah, Dr. Miles Monroe, amen, said pigeons, amen. Pigeons, amen, are scavengers. The scavengers on the ground and grumble and complain all day. Eagles are not. They fly and make less noise, waiting for opportunities to strike the next prey and to glide with current in the storm. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, there are some things, church of God, that you ought not to even fool yourself with. Hallelujah. There's some things that you just have to stay away from because it's not eagle's food. Amen. It's stuff for pigeons. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, amen. Leaders are problem solvers. They don't complain like pigeons do. They love to take challenges as eagles do when the storm comes. You've got to ask yourself, am I up for the challenge? Hallelujah. Amen. Things come, amen, that you can prove how much you love Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How much, amen, you're bent on serving him. Glory be to God. Number five. Eagles never eat dead meat. Eagles never eat dead meat. In other words, an eagle does not scavenge. It's not like a buzzard or a man. It may be from the same type, from the same family, but it's not a scavenger like buzzards. And I, 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 and I know we can, from the South, that's what we call them. When you see buzzards flying over, amen, them big black birds, amen, that means something is dead, amen, and they picking off of it, eating it off the road, or eating it back in the thickets, amen, or some kind. An eagle does not eat like that. Hallelujah to God. It only eats meat from the prey. It kills itself. Eagles eat raw and fresh meat. What a great act. Amen. A true, amen, leadership. We ought to eat, amen. We eat the fineries of God's word. Hallelujah. We don't eat the leftovers. Amen. God gives us fresh manna from on high. Can you give God, amen, the hand praise? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, true eagles. Uh, we spend time with God. We spend time with people who are vibrant in thinking. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to be with people who can think and make informed decisions and take actions. Uh, amen. Don't hang around. Amen. People who are not pushing you to be better than what you have been. Amen. You want to hang with people. Amen. Who push you to be better than you have been. I hope you're listening to me today. These are people who bring change into society. They are lively and active people. Amen. So our job is to go out and define who makes you and what makes you better. Glory be to God. Mm. Ah, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Number six, pay attention. Eagles possess vitality. They possess vitality. I'm going to read this, and I want you to just, just pay attention. Eagles are full of life. They're visionary, but they find time to look back at their lives and re-energize themselves. That's what you ought to be doing. Amen. Because sometimes the toil of the day will render you weak. Hallelujah. You ought to take some time, amen, to spend with Jesus, shut the TV off, <clears throat> shut the world out, Find your quiet spot so you can hear the voice of God. Amen. I know some people say God ain't speaking. I, I, I beg to differ of you. You are lying. God does speak to his people because he said, my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. Glory to God. Mm. So they re-energize uh, themselves. This happens, pay attention. This happens about the age of 30. 
What happens is when the eagles reach the age of 30, their physical body condition deteriorates fast, making it difficult. It deteriorates fast, making it difficult for them to survive. What is really interesting is that the eagle never gives up living. Church, you can't give up what's doing what's right. You, I don't care who don't like it. I don't care who feels whatever they feel. You cannot give up doing what is right. Just like the evil eagle, eagle does not give up living, you cannot give up on doing what is right. Instead, it retreats to a mountaintop. And over a five month period, goes through a metamorphosis. Pay attention. It knocks off its own beak by banging it against a rock, plucks out its talons, and then its feathers. <laughs> Each stage produces a regrowth of the removed body parts, allowing the eagle to live for another 30 to 40 years. Did y'all hear that? <clears throat> there are times in your life that you must look back and take stock of your life. The good, the bad experiences, and you that you've been through as a child of God. Are you keeping in trend with the current knowledge trend? Do you need to improve certain areas in your life? As a child of God, you got to look at yourself. No one can take inventory for you but you. <laughs> they pluck off the, the, the feathers that they have once used to soar and they kind of go into what we call a hibernation. They get away from all of this other stuff. They go back and they regroup. And then after, Lord God, you got to take time. Amen. Take time away from everything. Shut everything out. Shut everybody off. Amen. Get your mind right with God and then let God give you clarity. Hallelujah. Mm. Lord, have mercy. You check the balances on your personal life, your personal commitment to Jesus Christ, your personal commitment to righteousness. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Last one, eagles, they also nurture their young. Eagles are known for their aggression. They are absolutely ferocious. And they who, <laughs> they're great birds that you've got to take notice of. What is more astonishing is that this bird has their ability to nurture their young ones. Research has shown that no member of the bird family is more gentle and attentive to its young ones than the eagles. We look out for one another. We take precious time to make sure that one another are all right. Are you listening to me? Amen. We ought to be of the same mindset in the household of faith. We are his habitation. We are his people the sheep of his pasture and we ought to soar in behavior like the eagles do. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I got to quit. My time, my time is up. Mm. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 if y'all give me five more minutes, I want to finish this because I want you to understand this. Mm. When the mother eagle sees that it's time for it to teach the eaglets to fly. She gathers an eaglet on her back and spreading her wings flies high. Suddenly she swoops out from under the eaglet, allowing it to fall. Sometimes, oh God, hmm. Sometime God is allowing you on his wings to be there, but then he wants you to trust him. So he allows the eaglet to fall. As it falls, it gradually learns what its wings are for until the mother catches it once again. The process is repeated. 
If the young is slow to learn or cowardly, she returns it to the nest and begin to tear the nest apart uh, until there is nothing left for the eaglet to cling to. Then she nudges him off the cliff. Lord, have mercy. Isn't that what God has done to many of us? The eagle has stirred its nest. Hallelujah. It's made the nest uncomfortable. Maybe God's talking to somebody today. The nest is uncomfortable. Amen. It used to be comfortable for you, but you've learned too much. Amen. You're full of knowledge and full of what God gave you. Now it's time for you to go out, amen, and to teach and encourage, amen, and to inspire, amen, others to be exactly what God called them to be. Oh, God, are you listening to me today? God's great, honey. He's great. We ought to soar on eagle's wings because he's given us everything that has pertained to life and godliness. Hallelujah. True leaders, amen, are not bosses. We just grow people. Ha, huh? that's where I am. I am, a, I am a people grower. Amen. I help you be better than what you already are because there's a God that you've got to, amen, give an account to. Hallelujah. So we strive, amen, to please God, amen, and to pour into you so that you can be the eagle who stretches out your wings and learns how to fly. Amen. We empower you. We help you, amen, to open up businesses and do what you do, amen. But you've got to keep Jesus Christ on the forefront. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We ought to nurture you. We ought to inspire you. We ought to inspire you to do what is lawful and what is right. Listen, everybody ain't going to listen, but listen, I got news for you. Amen. One thing is for sure. The eagle knows how to tear up the nest so there's nothing else left. So you don't have a choice but to learn how to fly. Learn how to walk with God. Learn how to please God. Those of you who have lost your leaders, amen. God has now put you in a position for you to learn how to walk with God for yourself and not be dependent on the leaders that you once had. That's why, amen, he has scattered the sheep. Amen. He has Amen. It is God, amen, that turns around, amen, smites the shepherd and scatters the flock. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you listening to me today? Amen. You ought to thank God what is happening now. Amen. It's God is showing, amen, you will be able to see what's really in you. What you've always been. How you've always been. Hallelujah. That's why you ought to get yourself back into the relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of you all are at home. Amen. And you're at home on purpose because you're still mad. You're still angry. But listen, the eagle has torn up the nest. Hallelujah. Amen. Now it's time for you. Amen. To learn how to fly. Learn how to depend on the wind for yourself. Learn how to depend on Jesus Christ. For yourself because he is the our glory he is the uh, our glory he is the wind beneath my wings amen he's my joy in sorrow he's my hope for tomorrow there is none like him you ought to give god a hand hallelujah he is great i got to quit hallelujah amen give god some glory church thank you jesus hallelujah give him the praise give him the praise Give him the praise. He's worthy. Yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I love him. Ain't nothing nobody can do about it. Amen. Walk with God. Please, God, for yourself. And watch him take you to high places. Watch him take you. Amen. Because, listen, everybody can't get to high places. Because the understandings of God come from where God dwells. And God does dwell in the high places. Amen. People ain't going to understand why you don't eat dead stuff. Hallelujah. Why you only, amen, feast, amen, on the finest of wheat and that which you catch and that which is fresh. Are you listening to me today? <laughs> Glory be unto God. Amen. Might I say this to you? And I'm going to let y'all go. Amen. Be very careful. Amen. Pay attention. The eagle is probably stirring the nest. The eagle is stirring up, amen, the nest. Because if the nest were comfortable, you would never leave. Hallelujah. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Amen. My God, my godmother, amen, was told years ago, amen, by one of our bishops. Amen. Amen. The eagle is stirring the nest. And when the eagle begins to stir the nest, 
Amen. The nest becomes uncomfortable. Amen. The comfortable place. Amen. Does not become comfortable anymore. I got to quit. Y'all. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. When the eagle is stirring the nest, amen, be wise enough to learn how to fly. When the eagle is stirring the nest and tearing the nest up, tearing it apart, amen, putting glass in it that was once, amen, briars and all kinds of honey, that's the time for you to seek the God who you know, hallelujah, because you are his portion. I've got to quit. Give God some praise right where you are. Clap your hands. <laughs> Clap your hands, church. Hallelujah to God. Amen. I got to quit. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord strengthen you. May heaven smile on you. May he give you peace. May he give you comfort until he returns again. The Lord is soon to come back. If you like to be in an in-person service, amen, and you've never been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, you're living beneath your privilege. You must be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of all your sins. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in another language as the Spirit of God give utterance. And then you've got to take, your, take his yoke upon you and learn about him. For he is meek. He is lowly. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. I got to quit. Amen. The Lord love you. I love you. May heaven smile on you. Amen. If you like to be in the in-person service right now, we are still at the double tree until the end of this month. Amen. The address is 13111. Amen. Sycamore Drive in the city of Norwalk, California. Our service begins at 10 a.m. You're free to come in. You're free to worship. You're free to shout. You're free to dance. You're free to lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. You're free to bring your heavy load. I don't care what the load is. Amen. The altar is there. Amen. The blood of Jesus is there to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Glory be unto God. Hallelujah. I got to let y'all go. May God bless you. Continue to soar on eagle's wings. And I'll, I'm, I, I honestly, I'm going to tell you, amen, the higher you soar, the less flyers you're going to come across. The higher you soar, amen, in your moral fiber, the less, amen, you're going to come across trying to strive to please him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. May God bless all of you. May God strengthen you. May God keep your mind. May God keep your spirit. Just do what you're supposed to do. Do what you are supposed to do. And watch how God swings doors open. Huh? You might find another eagle. Don't be a buzzard. Don't be a buzzard. You might find another eagle. Just don't be a buzzard. I love you. God bless you. In Jesus' name.